Hi guys, welcome to ATP. So in terms of the uh, specification, we need to be aware of the uh, structure of the adenosine triphosphate uh, as shown per diagram. So adenine phase, ribose, pentose sugar, and free uh, phosphates. So we will be looking at the hydrolysis and synthesis of ATP and also at the function of ATP. There are plenty of questions asking you about ATP all the time. You can always uh, refer to ATP in your uh, essays as well. So let's get started. So to get started, we've got a question here. So you've got a structure of ATP and you've got the structure of DNA molecule. So you need to look at the differences between uh, those nucleotides or similarities. So when you're comparing those, you should come up with the idea that ATP has ribose uh, and the DNA has deo deoxyribose. ATP has three phosphate groups, but DNA has only one phosphate. And ATP base always is the adenine, but in DNA we've got four different bases, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. So uh, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, uh, triphosphate, is a phosphorylated macromolecule. So plants and animals oxidize uh, organic molecules to make ATP, which is then used as the main energy source to carry processes within the cells. So a single molecule of ATP is a nucleotide derivative and is formed from a molecule of ribose, a molecule of adenine and free phosphate groups, what we've mentioned before. So uh, hydrolysis and synthesis of ATP. What we really need to remember about this, it's the fact that bonds between phosphate groups are unstable and so have a low activation energy, which means they are easily broken. So if we're looking at the uh, hydrolysis of uh, ATP, okay, it will be hydrolyzed to ADP and inorganic phosphate. Condensation reaction then makes the bonds between ADP joined with uh, inorganic phosphate uh, to give us ATP. So uh, one more time, this is the condensation and this is the hydrolysis reaction. Make sure you are aware of those. So uh, remember, for the condensation, you're using energy, okay, because you are creating a bond. But for the hydrolysis, energy is releases, released because energy is hiding in between the bonds of the inorganic phosphate. So um, enzymes then used for the hydrolysis is ATP hydrolase and condensation ATP synthase. Make sure you are aware of the uh, reactions of hydrolysis requires water to break the bond, but conden uh, condensation will be removal of the, uh, of the water molecule. So ATP as a good source of energy, a really typical question. So we've got seven model answers here. ATP stores or releases small amounts of energy at time. So remember, so what approach? Always you need to finish your sentences. So no energy is wasted. It's small and soluble, so it can be transported around the cell. Slow activation energy, so can release stored energy quickly. It can transfer energy from one molecule to another by uh, uh, transferring one of its phosphate groups. So here you're thinking about the phosphorylation, for example, the glycolysis reaction. You need to phosphorylate glucose to make it more reactive. ATP cannot pass out of cells, so can be transported within the cell, around the cell, but cannot pass out of the cell, so the cell always has an intermediate supply of energy. It's rapidly reformed, and the hydrolysis of ATP is only a single reaction. So those sentences are your seven model answers that you can easily link for your essay that you can use for many questions about ATP. But there are many different questions that you can select your model answers to answer those. So, for example, synthesis of ATP from ADP involves the addition of a phosphate molecule to ADP. Okay, 
where does that take place? In chlorophyll, for example, phosphorylation during photosynthesis, in respiration, oxidative phosphorylation, when the phosphate groups are transferred from donor molecule to ATP, for example, substrate level phosphorylation. So again, those are your links for your assays. Two ways in which the hydrolysis of ATP is used in cells, so to provide energy for reactions, name processes, or to add the phosphate to make substrates more reactive, so for phosphorylation, to change the shape, for example. Properties of ATP that makes it a good source of energy in biological processes, so its energy is released in small amount, it's soluble, and involves a single reaction. Humans synthesize more than the body mass of ATP each day and explain why it is necessary for them to synthesize such a large amount of ATP. Because what we've said, you cannot store it and ATP releases only small amounts of energy at a time. So advantages of ATP as an energy storage molecule with phenacyl. So we've got here the fact that they cannot pass out of the cell. They are quickly uh, hydrolyzed and stores in small amounts. So look, all the same answers are coming. You just need to know how to use them. Explain why ATP is not a good long-term energy store. So here again, uh, the bonds uh, between the phosphates are unstable. Cells do not store large uh, amounts of ATP and it's rapidly reformed. Okay, so remember the, en the energy is stored between the bonds. So here we've got the examples of using ATP. So you can use it again for your assay. So metabolic processes, okay, ATP provides the energy needed to build up macromolecules from the basic units. Movement, so, and, uh, so we need the energy for the muscle contraction. Active transport, ATP provides the energy to change the shape of carrier proteins in plasma membrane. So molecules can be moved against concentration gradient. So again, uh, carrier proteins only for active transport, not channel proteins. Remember, secretion. So ATP is needed to form the lysosomes needed for the secretion of cell products and activation of molecules. So phosphates, inorganic phosphate released during the hydrolysis of ATP can be used to phosphorylate other compounds. So for example, glycolysis reaction okay so atp it's useful and explain why so our final slide on atp release energy in small amounts it easily broken down okay and phosphorylates add phosphates make uh, substances more reactive and reformed made again okay so hopefully you've got a good picture of atp now you can link it uh, within your essay, you can use it in many, many, many questions. Okay, so that's everything for ATP. See you later.